But you guys, today we're taking a look at how to back up your Windows PC using the Drive Client from Synology. So this is the Synology website. I'm going to select my NAS here and do a search for it. And then we can download the actual Synology Drive Client to back up all of our data. It's a new feature, so let's go ahead and do a search. I'm using the DS923+. And this is the latest NAS from Synology. So I'm going to download this one here. Right here, you can see we have the operating system DSM 7.2. We can download that and install that. I'm on the selected version here, as you can see. So you need to select the version that you're on, which is mine is 7.1.1. And we're going to select this one. And you can then download this and update that if you wish to the latest version. Or you can do it inside of your Synology. Once we've got this done, what we're going to do here is we're going to head over to the desktop utilities feature here. So click on this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to where it says Synology Drive Client. This is the uh, Drive Client which we can use as a desktop utility. This works for Windows, Mac, and also Ubuntu here. So you can download which version you're running on your system. So I'm going to go ahead and we're downloading the Windows.exe version. And before we continue, I just want a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 11 Pro or cheap Windows 10 Pro key, then Check out the links in the video description. Head over to the uh, website, create an account, and use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order. Once you submit your order, you can use PayPal to pay for your purchase and they will send you your product. And you can use this on Windows 10 or Windows 11 computers. Once that's downloaded, we can click on open here and open up the Drive Client application from Synology. Let's go ahead and get this installed. On the PC here. Let's go ahead and click next. Agree to their terms and conditions, and this will go ahead and execute and install the Synology uh, Drive Client. So, what we're going to do here is run our Synology Drive Client, and we're going to head over to our Synology NAS here. And once we're inside here, you can see we're inside the actual package center of our Synology. And uh, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you what to do here to get this set up and get it running on the system. So, we're going to have the Drive Client on our PC. And we're also going to have the Drive Client server running on our Synology NAS. So let's go ahead and click on Synology Drive Server. And we can then get this installed on here. So I'm going to say yes to this and let this download off the uh, servers and then get it installed onto our Synology NAS. So I'm just going to let it go through here and do what it needs to do here. It's going to download all of the required software and get it installed and get it running on our Synology NAS. This is going to be the server side of things. And then I'll show you how to get it set up and how to back up all of your precious computer data to your Synology NAS using the Drive Client. Now, once that's installed, what we can do is open up the Synology NAS client here, and I'll show you how to do that. So once we've got this done, you should see something looking like this. And we can now click on Start Now. Once you click on Start Now, you need to connect to your Synology NAS. So your Synology NAS will be either using your domain name or your Quick Connect and your username and password. And you can enable SSL data transmission encryption if you wish. Now, obviously, my one is this IP address here. I'm going to put this in here. Yours might be a different IP address, but you can just find this and then basically put it in here. And then you can put in your username and your password for your Synology NAS. So let me go ahead and just basically put this one in here and click Next. You can see here the SSL certificate of your Synology NAS is not trusted. And we're going to set all this up on our Synology NAS right now. And I'll get this all working. So I'm going to proceed anyway here. And you should see something looking like no team folder available. So go to your Synology Drive, Admin, Console, and you can enable this team folder. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to click on here and click on the Got It. And we can now uh, sort this out and get it set up. So we're on the actual server here and we can set this up so we can get this uh, working. So you can see right up the very bottom here, uh, no team folder available. Uh, please go to your DSM Synology Drive admin console to enable this folder. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to our area here, which is inside our shared folders in control panel. And we can now go to create a shared folder. So let's go ahead and create a shared folder. 
Now for your shared folder, you can call this whatever you like. This is gonna be the name of your folder. So I'm gonna just call this PC Backup, but you can get more creative and call it whatever you like, which is more recognizable for you. Give it a description. And again, additional security measures. I'm gonna skip that part here. And you can now configure the advanced area here if you want to do that. I'm gonna skip this part. That's just uh, another area you might want to read and have a look at. Once we get to the configure user permissions here, we need to configure this so we can read and write for the particular user that we want to allow to uh, write to that folder. So now we're all set up here. You can see we got a PC backup folder here. Okay, with that done, we can now click on the Synology Drive admin console and go to that team folder, which it was telling us to do. You can see I've got a bunch of different stuff in here. So I'm gonna disable the Plex Media because I'm not backing up to there. I'm gonna go for the PC backup folder that we just created and make some adjustments in here. And good, give this a good read through and check mark what you wanna do. But that's exactly what I wanna set mine up as. And I'm gonna click OK here. Now we can now click OK. And now we can see this is enabled and it's ready to go. So what we need to do is close that off. And what we can do is now go back to our clients on our computer. So you can see here, there was no team folder here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click next again and it is giving us that certificate. So I'm gonna proceed anyway. And you should now see something looking like this, which is choose the type of task. So you've got sync task or backup task. If you want to sync, it will sync files between your computer and your Synology drive server in real time. But I'm gonna be setting up the backup task, which is gonna back up files from your computer to your Synology drive server on a customized uh, schedule. So what we're gonna do here is set this up and click next. And this will take us to the next screen once we do that. But if you want to do the sync task, you can do. But I'm going to go for this one here. It says no backup uh, source selected. So let's click OK. And now we can select what we want to back up to our Synology NAS using the Synology Drive client. So let's go ahead and check mark some of this stuff. I'm just going to keep this small to make it nice and quick. And you can see here it's got my main PC. And I can then go ahead and select what I want to back up. To that location so if it's documents or you want to back up maybe a special folder or something like that you can do but i'm just going to go in here and just basically select a bunch of different stuff so i'm going to back up some photos here just so you can see inside my pictures area so i'll just put a check mark inside here and you can open this up and have a good look and uncheck the stuff that you don't want to back up but let's just do this for quickness here and i'll show you basically what we can do next so let's go ahead and we've got that check marked so we can now select a backup destination. It's in my team folder and we've already connected to that PC backup. So I'm going to click on that and click OK. Now we've done this, we can now do the backup rules. And there's a bunch of backup rules here that you can mess around with. I'm just going to keep this nice and simple. But if you want to go around and mess around in here, you can do. But I'm going to leave this as default here. And what we're gonna do is cancel this out and go to the next button and click next. So here we can have a continuous backup, which will back up files when these files have been changed, a manual backup, which is gonna back up only when I click on the backup now button, or we can set up a scheduled backup, which will back up on specific days and times of my requirements. So you can set this up how you like, but whatever you wanna do, you can just put the radio button in these and then you can click on the next button and go ahead and back up. So depending on what you're gonna do, I'm gonna set the manual back up here and we're gonna click on next. And basically what we're gonna do here is leave this all as is because that's exactly what I want it as. And we can click done and this will then go ahead and back up all of the stuff that we check marked. And you can see here, do you wanna run the backup tasks now? I'm gonna say okay. And it will apply the changes and it will copy that stuff straight over to my NAS from my computer. Really simple and easy to do. And uh, it's gonna do this in the background, but because I've got this manually, it will only do it when I click on the backup button. If you want something a little bit more scheduled, then you can set that up. It's very simple and easy to do, self-explanatory stuff really. So go through here and uh, we can click on next. This is just gonna give you a, a bunch of stuff here. And now you can see backup now, and you can restore as well. And uh, basically you've got your little uh, software here which you can open up and uh, run whenever you like so if there's been changes you can run the backup just like so and this is manually doing it but if you want to set up a schedule or you want to sync that stuff you can do and when there's changes it will automatically back up in the background
Now the application is pretty easy to use and uh, I'll just quickly go through some of the settings, some of the features that you have here. So you can open this up here and you can see we have backup source, backup mode and connection. And you can set this up to whenever you like. You can go back in here and change the settings and basically make it different if you want to go from a manual to a scheduled backup, you can do. We've got the sync tasks here. You can create a sync task. You've got a backup task. You've got your logs and you've got your notifications and you've got your global settings. This is for general notifications, display, proxy and usage. You can set this up how you like, but it's all pretty self-explanatory. And it's an essential way of backing up all your precious data. Maybe it's photographs, videos of your holiday or whatever it is that you're taking uh, videos of. Maybe it's your phone data. It could be anything really. And you can back up to your NAS and it will all be safe. And again, you can have other backups as well. You'd have one on your computer, one on the device that you're using and one on your NAS. And you can even have one in the cloud and you can make sure that you're fully backed up uh, and you're not going to lose any of that precious data, especially if you get hit with ransomware or anything like that. Now, the backup has all been inside that folder that we created here. I can show you right here. It's already been copied over and it was very quick and easy. And there it is, all of the data that we've just copied over from our system to our NAS. And this will, uh, if you get this set up as a sync, basically when I did delete anything or when I add stuff to it, it will automatically make those changes and send it straight to my NAS without having to uh, deal with it yourself. So if you want to set that up, that's super easy to set up as well. You just go through the on-screen prompts and set that up and you won't even have to worry about doing it manually. So it's super easy. And if you want to add more people to uh, able to back up or have access to it, you can do. You can go to this location and go to your properties here. Inside here, you'll see your general area and you'll see your permissions. Inside here, you can create permissions, add people in here and give them permissions. You can see there's people denied there, but if you want to add them in and let them have access to it, you can do. And if you don't, you can deny them access. And it's that simple. And if you haven't got a Synology NAS yet or any other NAS, then you really should consider getting one because they are really useful to have. Now, I know the initial NAS setup is quite expensive at the beginning, but once you've got your NAS and you've got, say, two drives populated, maybe you've got two eight terabyte drives and it's a four bay NAS, you can leave two spare and you can add to those at a later date and put more drives in at a later date and expand your storage. And again, once that's filled up, you've got other options as well to expand storage even further. There's plenty of storage in these NASes and they are essential uh, for backing up all of your data and sharing it with your friends and family and stuff like that. Well, anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.